G'day folks, Troy Dean here and welcome to another episode of the WP Elevation Podcast. I'm overjoyed and a little bit freaked out because I have with me in the studio super guest Simon Kelly. How are you brother? Yeah, good man. How's super yourself? guest? Yeah, what the, sure. What the hell is super guest? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what happens when you don't have a script Yeah, yeah. and well, you just wing it. Well, I've wrote that over there, so you'd, super guest. it'd be subliminal. Mm. What would make what would make a guest super? Well, we'll find out in a couple okay. of minutes, won't we? Right, eh? What have you got? Are you going to add some value here? Are you going to uh, drop some value well, bombs? We'll see. We'll see what comes up. <clears throat> I've totally set you up for failure here, haven't I? Thanks, buddy. You're a super guest. Yeah, yeah. You can't possibly live up to those expectations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving the direction uh, this is going. Yeah, of course, yeah. So, of course I can. the reason that you're here is because we've had some mm. amazing feedback on the blog post that we published last week, the quarterly review, mm. entrepreneurial, how to avoid entrepreneurial burnout, the quarterly review, which uh, is a thing that we do here quarterly, because it's called the quarterly review. Genius. The quarterly review is when we, every quarter, we review our results and where we're going and the plan and the path ahead. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we take stock of where we're at and where we want to be yeah. and try and figure out how we're going to bridge the gap from where we are now to where we want to be in the future. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And the, do you do that on a regular basis? I do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, almost daily. Almost daily. Yeah. I do a quarterly review every day. Every no, day. No, no I, um, I have a, a pretty simple system where I just write, uh, well, I've got a huge whiteboard in my office mm -hmm. and I'll just write plus, <laughs> minus, and then N. Is this as big as the whiteboard behind you? It's um, bigger than that, bigger, just so you bigger, know. Bigger, bigger, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bigger than that one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I thought you'd like that. It's a new whiteboard in our studio, um, by the way. Yeah, yeah. It's nice. It's good. It's quite nice. Yeah. It's, it's righty board as well. I've it's righty board. One. It is, yes. Yeah, but I went righty board .com. I went for premium. Just you went for premium? What? It's is that not really premium? Nice. Are you no. telling us the one in our studio is not premium? I'm afraid not. What do you mean? Why yeah, is it, yeah. What's the difference? Uh, there's some thickness. What? Yeah, so instead of writing on like the texture of the wall, there's a little bit of like padding. So How it's is nice this and a thing? Smooth. How have you got premium at home and we don't have premium here? Like that. How is that even a thing? Super guest, man. It's super guest. Super guest. Yeah, yeah. Who ordered that one? Not me. Right. Yeah. Whoever ordered that one is in strife. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe they didn't order premium. Yeah. Uh, anyway, to talk to me about your daily. So <clears throat> plus, minus, and then N for next. next. So like what worked well, oh. what was, you know, Is this bullet good. journaling? Is this like No, 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 I just write it on the... On the writing on the, the writing board, board. The, yeah. premium writing board. Yeah, the premium writing board. Plus, minus, and N for next. N for next, right. yeah. So what worked well, what didn't so much, and then what am I going to do next time? Like tomorrow or next week or quarterly, whatever. Just the same process for daily, weekly... Quarterly reviews. Do you do this after a date? Uh, sometimes, yeah. What went well, what didn't, what to do next time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. lots of things. After yeah. like sales calls, yeah, dates, just hanging out, doing stuff, like yeah. a Sunday, I don't know, whatever. Wow. Anything that's going on. And I'm like, you know what? Could have been better. Yep. Let me just, instead of thinking about that and having that go over and over in my head and just become all crazy, just put it in this framework and just puts it out in one place, makes it easy. Do you think the self-analysis can, um, can tie you out? Like, yeah, without yeah. just being in your head, absolutely. Yeah. Right. yeah, if it's not out on paper or a premium whiteboard, then um, <laughs> it can definitely get like a bit stuck just in your head. Just rubbing salt into that wound, aren't you, yeah. about the premium whiteboard. Yeah. So let's just say you go camping for a week, you're completely unplugged from the grid, you're off the internet, you're completely chilled out. Do you get home after that camping trip and say, well, this is what went well over the camping trip, this is what didn't go too well, and this is what mm. I could do better next time? Potentially, like if I feel inspired to, but usually it's when something didn't go as well as I would have wanted, oh. and I want to improve in some way. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so, uh, so, just out of interest, this sure. is completely off script by the way, but just out of interest, as it usually is, <laughs> out of interest, are there usually more things, are they three columns, yeah. plus, minus, end? Yep. Okay. Uh, where, where are the most the items sit? Which column? In plus. In plus. Yeah, yeah. So this went well. Yep. So you're good at celebrating the wins. That's right, exactly. Right. Focusing on the wins instead of just like, oh, this didn't work. It's like, all right, stop for a sec. What did go well? And sometimes that takes a bit of time to remember, like what you're grateful for kind of thing. You're like, ah, oh, well, this was crap. That wasn't exciting at all. You want to yeah. kind of go into that problem solving or this didn't work, mm -hmm. but starting with the wins. And then just by doing that, it's kind of the stuff that didn't work is just not as powerful anymore. Right. So you're like, well, actually, this didn't work quite so well, but I'm more focused on the positive and what I could do better next time. Right. As opposed to just this was crap. So add, so what goes in the next column? Is it a combination of what's in the plus and what's in the minus that you want to carry forward? Because I'm trying to understand how yeah. something ends up in the next column that As might not already exist in the plus or the minus column. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like what so, would go in the next column that's... Once you've filled in the plus column and the minus column, mm. what would you put in the next column that doesn't already exist in one of the... So let's say we go, 
let's maybe not we, but let's say sure. some separately we're going camping yeah. for yeah. a week. Why would yeah, you yeah. go camping? Yeah, I'm just saying. Oh, just for this example. You don't want to go yeah. camping with me? Well, well, super, super guests, guests kind of like premium, to hang out with other with super guests. Premium whiteboard. Yeah. I want to go camping with me. Yeah, so I'm a peasant. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Sure. So what went well was you know uh, went surfing. Let's say went surfing. Yeah. What didn't go so well was um, I set fire to the tent or something yeah, like that. That would not be good. Next right. time, mm -hmm. don't bring you know, a small fireplace and put it inside the tent. Right. Like it's not on either of those plus or minus, but it's okay. just, yeah, next time don't, you know, light a fire in the tent. So plus and minus so. is more outcomes, whereas next could be actions to take. Plus and time. minus is in the past and uh -huh. next is in the future. Oh, very good. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But even contextually, plus or minus is, is outcomes that are in the past and next is actions to take in the future to affect future outcomes. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I like good. that. Yeah. So, now that we've got that out of the way, the other thing that we mentioned, because we didn't talk about any of that in the blog post, but what mm. we did talk about in the blog post is the five metrics that we measure for our Mavericks Club members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the things Although, we set up on the dashboard. Correct. Yeah. For the uninitiated, we have a mastermind program called Mavericks Club, where we coach our high-performing agencies to go from where they are to where they want to be. And it's usually agencies that are doing multiple six figures and want to get to high six figures or seven figures. And we have a coaching program that's a mastermind called the Mavericks Club. And part of that is we set up dashboards for them and we reflect back to them how they're going in their business. And there are five metrics that we measure for our Mavericks Club members. And they are, I'll just drill through them and then we can talk about why each one is important, right? Mm. And also how to measure each one. Yep. Monthly revenue monthly recurring revenue, profit as a percentage of revenue, uh, days off per month, and the percentage of your week that you're spending in your sweet spot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so should we mm. talk about, break down each one. Mm -hmm. Monthly revenue. Yeah, so the revenue that you're, that's an easy one, you know? Yeah, that, yeah. Is in, that is, yeah. that is uh, cash that you've received in a, a, any given month. Now, mm. some agency models have lumpy cash flow because you might be working on big projects and then have a quiet period. For those of you who don't have recurring revenue set up, of course, if you're in Mavericks, you'll have enough recurring revenue set up that your monthly revenue will be relatively predictable. Uh, but if you are struggling to figure out what your monthly revenue is, you might wanna take a quarter, like quarterly revenue, and divide it by three to figure out an average. That's it, exactly. And like, is it really counted as your monthly revenue if it's not really the average of three months? Like, if you, as you're saying, like the roller coaster, if you're doing like, you know, 2K, 2K, and then 17K, mm -hmm. you wouldn't just put 17K because that's what I did last time. You know, let's make it a bit more like realistic to include the history. Yeah. And the point is to set yourself a target, to set yourself yeah. a goal. So, so, you know, we are December now. Uh, by March 2020, where do you want your monthly revenue to be? And, and that, that is total monthly revenue, yep. whether it's recurring or whether it's project-based or whether it's, you know, um, some uh, grant revenue that you received. We get some grant money here from Austrade uh, because we spend a lot of money on advertising and marketing costs outside of Australia. Uh, so that we also include that in total revenue. So your total revenue coming into the business, right? That's monthly revenue. So what do you want your average monthly revenue to be by the end of March 2020? Mm -hmm. Now the second metric is, and just let's just, uh, let's just deal with this uh, right off the bat. Revenue is important because it is a barometer that measures the value that you're adding to your clients and how well you're doing as a business, right? Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people get funny about measuring money and they go, oh, well, it's not all about money. The truth is without money, you can't do anything else. So revenue is an important barometer that measures the value we're adding to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Monthly recurring revenue is recurring revenue that is contracted recurring revenue from clients who are paying you for either retainers, SEO, care plans, marketing retainers, strategy, coaching, whatever it is. But it, it, it's not something that accidentally happens. It is contracted recurring revenue that comes in every month. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And would you call, like let's say we've got a website that is 12 grand and you're getting a client to pay that on like a monthly um, recurring basis, so $1,000 per month, mm. would you put that in the monthly recurring? That's a very good question. So it comes down to that it, question it, quite a bit. If it's yeah. a payment plan, mm. no. Mm. So if someone buys a website for $12,000 and they want to pay it off over 12 months, well, I, I would have an issue with that. But anyway, if they say they wanted to pay three pay of like four grand a month over three months, that's reasonable. Uh, that is a payment plan, it's not recurring revenue. However, if you're clever, what you might do is you, you, you and what some of our Mavericks do is kind of factor in the build of the website as you know, into the into the into the thing that we're selling, and what we're actually selling them is a twelve-month program, which is 
$1,000 a month. And that includes digital marketing, SEO, you know, analytics, analysis, some consulting, and they just happen to get a website as part of that agreement. So that is contracted recurring revenue because it's a 12 month retainer, not a payment plan. Yep. If you're selling payment plans, I count the revenue in the month that the agreement is signed. So if they say we've agreed to a $12,000 website, but we're gonna pay it off over three months, that revenue is represented in the month that they agree to it, yeah, yeah. not the three months following. Once it's contracted, Correct. signed and agreed, mm. then Correct. that's when you count the revenue that's right. that month. Once you've raised the invoice, yep. it gets counted as revenue. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So even if you're selling a website for $12,000 and they wanna pay it off in three installments of four grand, raise the invoice now and say payment one is due now, payment two is due next month, payment three is due next month. But all the revenue gets raised in your business in this month. Mm -hmm. So monthly recurring revenue is the second metric. Now, important to note that month, total monthly revenue, which is our first metric that we measure, includes recurring. That's a common question we get as well. Well, do I, does the monthly revenue number exclude or include recurring? No, no, total monthly revenue includes all monthly revenue. Recurring revenue should be a smaller number unless your entire business is 100% recurring, which some of our mavericks are. But your monthly recurring should be a smaller number. And we just want to know how much recurring have you got in the business because that allows us to make some better choices around hiring team or saying no to certain projects because we've got our baseline recurring covered. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. Next metric is profit as a percentage of revenue. Now, let's break this down. Mm -hmm. Profit is always expressed as a percentage of revenue because that's how we measure profit, right? And we in the digital space usually work on high margins. There are two things I wanna talk about here. One is what you get paid as a business owner for the purpose of this exercise, leave your pay in the business when you're calculating your profit. So if you're turning over $300,000 a year and paying yourself $70,000 as a salary, leave that 70 grand in the business, don't count it as an expense, leave it in the, 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 the revenue numbers and work out all your other expenses and then work out your profit as a percentage because that's the actual profit that the business is generating every year that you get as the business owner. Whether you pull out 70 grand as a salary and then another 30 grand at the end of the year as a profit dividend, doesn't matter. You leave your pay in the business and work out your profit numbers uh, based on that equation. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it does. And it, it makes it easier to calculate as well. Because it just right. gets, you can get really complicated depending on what kind of model you want to do, but this model, nice and easy, and it keeps things consistent over time. That's right. Yeah. Um, because I get paid a small salary, but then I get profit dividends throughout the year. And the reason we do that is because I don't want to get paid a huge salary because then I pay huge amounts of tax. Mm. And also at the end of the financial year, the salary I get might not equate to the profit that I'm owed as the business owner. So we just take a profit dividend throughout the year, I get paid a small salary, get paid a profit dividend, and at the end of the year we work out the numbers. So that's why we leave all profit, all owner's salary in the business when we're figuring out profit. Mm. And it's worked out as a percentage. There's no magic number here, but you should be aiming for a minimum, minimum of 33% net profit at the end of the year out of everything you've sold, you've paid all of your expenses, you've paid your contractors, you've paid your software, you've paid for all your AppSumo lifetime deals and your Black Friday bullshit, you've paid for everything else, and at the end of the year, there should be at least 33, 35% net profit left over for you as the business owner, and that is your, your reward for running the business, right? Mm -hmm. There's a whole other conversation about whether or not you, your business gets to a point where you can put yourself on salary, which some of our mavericks have, they put themselves on salary. That's a whole other conversation we can have another time. But for the purpose of this exercise, just follow the format that we've laid out there. Now, there are three numbers that really measure the health of the business, mm. right? Because if, you are, if you're doing good revenue, good monthly recurring revenue, and good profit percentages, then your business is in a good place. Yep. However, there are two other metrics that we measure. And these relate to the health of the business owner. Mm. We'll talk about them. Yeah, exactly. So the first one, well, this is really the fourth one, is uh, is the sweet spot. Is that what we're up to uh, at the moment? Days off per month. Which <clears throat> I was actually talking to um to someone today about this. Like, uh, you know, what what are your goals in the next twelve months in terms of like having holidays and having some time off per month and uh, and per week? And he's like, I haven't had a day off in a really long time. I don't think that I could actually make that happen. I think I need to put my foot down and, and work more and actually you know, take less days off and have more time in the business. And then we got more talking more about his goals and what he wants to do with his family and taking a bit more time off. And it just, there was a massive misalignment with these things. Mm. Uh, so getting clear on uh, putting, like putting the big rocks in first. And I see those as time to recharge, which is taking holidays, taking weekends, 
finishing for the day and being present with your family and friends and whatever other activities you're doing, it's really, really important to recharge. So that's why we put in the, uh, the days off um, yeah, per <coughs> week. It's, it's incredibly it's, important to it's recharge. It's part of avoiding burnout. We, I've yeah, had a exactly. conversation with some people in, in one of our online course programs who, um, and if she's watching this, she'll know who I'm talking about, are doing good revenue, mm. j just over 100 grand a year, and been doing that for about 15 years, hasn't had a holiday in 15 years. Mm. Like, man, like, what are you doing? Like, you obviously really enjoy working and are allergic to taking time off mm. because otherwise you would have had a holiday. Yeah. So time off is really important. It helps you avoid burnout. The way we measure time off is uh, days off per month. And a day off means that you do not think about work. You don't check Slack. You don't check emails. You don't buy an AppSumo lifetime deal with some bullshit software you're never going to use. You don't do anything in the business. You completely disengage from work. Now, if you're just taking weekends off, I know there are more than four weeks in a year, but for the sake of ease, uh, we just measure that as eight days per month. If you're not working weekends, eight days a month. If you want to take a day off, I take Tuesday afternoons off to look after the little fella. Um, so for me, it kind of works out to about 10 days a month where I'm not actually working. Mm. Next week, I'm going to Adelaide to visit my family for a week. I'll do some little bits and pieces while I'm away, but I'll basically be disengaged for you know four or five days. Mm. But do you count that as a day off because you're like <clears throat> doing bits and pieces? No, if I get up and I check things, then mm. that's not a day off. You know, not a day I off. Weekends, I try really hard not to think about it, not to do anything. Mm. Now, the caveat here is I read a lot, mm. right? I read a lot of books and most of my books are business related. Mm -hmm. So my wife and I have this argument all the time. She's like, well, you're reading a business-related book again. You're not really having time off. And she's lying in bed reading a book about psychology, and she's a psychologist. And I'm like, well, neither are you. Mm. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, um, uh, but I'm okay with that. I, I mean, you know, I, that, that is my time to recharge. That, that's me, like, restocking the ice chest with inspiration. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Very good. All right, so the final number that we measure is the percentage of your week that you are spending in your sweet spot. Yeah. Uh, let's define sweet spot for people. So it's a, well, we've done this exercise many times, yeah. but it's a, take a piece of paper and draw one circle mm -hmm. and then another circle next to that and with a bit of an overlap, like a, a Venn diagram. Mm -hmm. And in one of those circles, write in skills and in the other one, write in passion and where the overall, um, where the overlap is, sorry, uh, that is your sweet spot, where your skills and your passion um, align. So you want to actually list all of those things down and just see what sits in in both of those um, both of those boxes. And the benefit of this is that I, uh, if I go, if I've been coding during the day or solving a technical problem during the day or trying to fix something that's not working or fixing connectivity issues with the national broadband network here in Australia, um, or something goes wrong and I'm solving technical problems, I get home at the end of the day and I'm cranky right. and I'm tired and Amy just knows I've had a shit day and she knows I've been solving technical problems. If I get home at the end of the day and I bounce in the door and I literally have more energy than when I left in the morning, which I know is hard to believe, that means I've been podcasting all day, talking to people on the phone, coming up with strategy, coming up with ideas and not spending a lot of time Yeah. On the keyboard. That's it. And you just need to know what works for you. I think that's yeah. that's key, is to know what energizes you and what is kind of, it takes away your energy. Yeah. You still need to do these things a lot of the time or have someone else that can, yep. but it's about helping our Mavericks and helping you stay within those spots that, that keep you energized. Yep. Um, easy to chunk this down is to look at the week, Monday through Friday, five days, break them down into a.m. and p.m., morning, afternoon, then you've got 10 slots. Very easy to work out percentages when you're dividing it by 10. And just kind of go, well, I spent, you know, that morning doing stuff that I don't like. That's afternoon in my sweet spot. Plot it out and go, well, I spent three periods out of 10 in my sweet spot. That gives you about a 30% ratio uh, of your time spent in your sweet spot. And the idea is, and only you know the right answer, the idea is to set your goal. How much of your week do you want to be spending in your sweet spot? And so the idea with all of these metrics, <clears throat> and there is a, a, uh, a score sheet, a download on the blog post. So if you just visit wpelevation.com and go to the blog and check out the uh, blog post called Quarterly Review or Avoiding Entrepreneurial Burnout uh, and download the cheat sheet, fill it in and work out what your goals are over the next three months and then work out kind of where you're at now and figure out, you know, how do we bridge that gap? What is the fastest way we can get from where we are now to where we want to be in the future? Um, I've got some ideas on this, but I can tell you one of the things that, and it just, just comes from you know coaching a bunch of agencies and freelancers over the last five or six years in the Blueprint program and now in Mavericks, that 
more revenue doesn't solve all problems, but it sure as hell helps. But smart revenue solves a lot of problems. And when I say smart revenue, I'm talking about not taking on that project that might be worth $8,000 for a website, which is a massive business directory website that you've never done before, and it's gonna take you six weeks to figure out how to use the plugins to make it happen, because that's not profitable. So building more recurring revenue that is in your sweet spot, that is profitable, is definitely the way to, is the far, one of the fastest ways to get from where you want to, where you are now to where you want to be on those metrics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was reading a, a bit of a, a story within the Mavericks um, just the other week about uh, this exact situation. One of our Mavericks who's uh, growing their, their recurring revenue, they're using, let's just say, uh, WordPress maintenance plans. They're really growing that and that's just going from strength to strength. But a couple of months ago, they took on a, a project that mm-hmm. wasn't one of these. Uh, it was for something in the, the healthcare practice space and they were building out a, um, um, a lead generation platform, connecting it to Pipedrive and, uh, and it was about 15 grand this project was, but it took months and it took them so far back with what they were doing, growing their monthly recurring, it just completely changed the focus, but it helped them to realize, helped the business owner to realize what their focus actually is, which is great. So this is where you do the, the plus minus next. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, this is what great about this. We can take this project and help to get more of these recurring revenue. What wasn't good is it took us completely away from what we were planning to do. What we're gonna do next is not take that on and we're gonna double down on our monthly recurring. That's right, not all revenue is equal. Yeah. So the beautiful thing about the sweet spot and knowing your profit numbers is you can start to focus on attracting those projects that are profitable, but also keep you and your team, if you have one, in your sweet spot so you don't exhaust everyone and you can grow revenue and stay profitable at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Just coming back to the entrepreneurial burnout. Go on. Have you ever ever experienced this before or come close or anything? Yeah, 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 absolutely, a couple of times. A couple of times? Probably three or four times I can think of off the top of my head where I've gone home and called um, well, back in the day, called Jin and said, cancel whatever I've got on tomorrow because I'm just lying on the couch watching reruns of Law and Order, Special mm-hmm. Victims Unit, because it's just time for me to watch Mariska Hargitay run around Manhattan and shoot people. It helps. It helps. Soothe the soul. Because uh, I just cannot deal with any shit tomorrow. Yeah. So I just cancel my day. That, that's happened probably three or four times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And there's been some other times where I've just woken up on a weekend and, and you know, just said to Amy, I, I'm just, I, I get nothing. I just cannot get out of bed. So how do you manage that now? Is that something that you're more ac- actively managing or is this something that... <laughs> this, is a, this is a family time slot, isn't it? This is a PG-rated podcast. Um, how do I manage... Well, ex- how really, are you going to answer well, that? I'm, I'm curious I mean. after this conversation, after this how conversation, are you going to manage that? Yes. But um, for now, for the kids at home... Yeah. Well, having children yeah. helps. It does help. Yeah, having children, it helps. having children is a reality check. Interesting. Um, exercise, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. Exercise um, and building a team, like yeah. not trying to do every freaking thing yourself. Yeah. You know. So having a child, and just coming back to that, having yeah. a child part, like what what is it about that? Because well, it's not about you anymore. So or? well, what what happened when 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 you have a child, <laughs> you realise that in the first sort of three months, they sleep for maybe you know an hour. Right, and then per month or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they'll sleep for like during the day. They have like a, a nap for like, if you're lucky, a couple of hours. Oscar's never been a great sleeper, so he's like asleep for forty five minutes, and then he wakes up and he's like, you know, game on. I want to go play, right? Mm-hmm. And he sleeps pretty well overnight, but he you know, doesn't sleep during the day anymore. And he's only two years and four months old, which is quite rare. Like even you know, two year old, three year olds, four year olds still have a day nap. He doesn't have a day nap. He only naps at daycare when all the kids are napping, but at home doesn't nap anymore. So what happens is when he was first born, he would go down for a 45 minute nap or he would go down for a nap. I knew that I had 45 minutes to get shit done. If I'm lucky, I might get an hour and a half or two hours. Usually it was about 45 minutes to an hour and he'd be awake. And so you have to get super focused on what is actually going to move the needle and what is all the bullshit that I'm doing that just doesn't matter. So you have to triage your to-do list and get brutal. And, And I think the other thing is that you just, you know, you go home and you have dinner and you wanna get the laptop out and work and when you have kids, you just can't do that. You, that that yeah. time is just gone. You're bathing, you're feeding, you're settling him, you're trying to get him to stay in his own bed. He's got a cold, he's crying, he's, you know, some shadow in his bedroom's freaked him out and he's having a, you know, tantrum. So you just don't have the time anymore to faff about. Mm. So you have to get very clear about what your sweet spot is and where you add the most value. And then for me, it was about 
getting other people in the business to do things that are in their sweet spot. Yeah. So instead of going down the path of like, oh, this is too much now that I've added a, a child into my life and freaking out about that, it's mm. like, well, I can solve this by mm. getting some skilled people on the team. Yeah. And also it's the constraints um, on your time now, compression yep. pants on your business, yep. so you only have a certain amount of time, and that's it. You cannot go, well, I'll just work the weekend, or well, yeah. I'll just work later. You literally cannot. No, right. I, so I, I haven't worked weekends since Oscar was born. I, I think, well I, done. I, I think, I, no, well, I think I've worked, I think I've worked maybe two Saturdays since Oscar was born, yeah. and that was just because we were, had a launch and we were going through a very particular busy period and there were some hard deadlines I had to fix, so I'd come in for maybe three or four hours on a Saturday and get some shit done yeah. uh, where there was no interruptions to meet a deadline. A lot of our customers are in the US, we're in Australia, so they're a day behind. So I think there's been two occasions where I've worked on a, a Saturday for a few hours, but as a rule, I don't work weekends. I might go through a period where I still look at stuff at night, uh, but usually by the time Oscar's in bed and we've had dinner, I'm too fried. Yeah. I'm too tired to look at And I'm not going to do anything productive. Yeah. I'm just searching for AppSumo deals, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Something subliminal going on in this episode. <laughs> we got an AppSumo deal coming out or something? No, we don't. We don't. We do have a, well, we had a Black Friday deal, but we don't have an AppSumo deal. Um, so, hey, I hope this has been helpful in some way. Yeah, we missed anything <laughs> obvious. No, I don't think so. I'd just like to, to recap that. Just yeah. what you're saying, I think was really helpful. It's like constraints on your time, like immovable constraints, yep. exercise, yeah. and um, Marissa, what's her name? Marissa Hargitay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mariska. Mariska yeah. The, the things that work for yeah. you, you know, replace Mariska with whatever works yeah. for you. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think that's key. I think, yeah. it, you know, working out what keeps you in your sweet spot and yeah. keeps you energized. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I play music as well and exercise, nice. 100%. The, yeah. the, the absolute number one thing that keeps my head together is exercise, regular exercise. If I don't exercise regularly, had a little bit of a back injury this year because I have a two-year-old. Um, those of you who have kids know what I'm talking about. Those of you who don't won't understand and that's totally fine. Um, so I've missed a little bit of exercise in the last couple of months and, and it does make me cranky when I don't exercise. Exercise is good for you because it pumps oxygen around your body and your brain, which is good for your blood cells and good for your organs and good for your tissues and good for your overall well-being. So exercise is in my calendar. Monday mornings, Thursday mornings, I'm at the gym. It is not negotiable. Yeah, awesome. That's great. Lock it cool. in. Cool. So download the uh, the cheat sheet, the scorecard. Map out the five numbers, where you want to be by the end of March 2020. Map out where you are now. And if you're really brave, get on over to Facebook and join our free Facebook group, which is the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. Just go to facebook.com and search for Digital Mavericks and share your results in that group. Tell us where you want to be by the end of March 2020. Tell us where you are now and tell us what your plan is to get there. Um, and in other news, for those of you who are up and about with an established business model in agencies and you have products and services to sell, I can tell you one of the quickest ways to get there is to run a very targeted, dedicated ad campaign. Facebook ads are the absolute low hanging fruit right now. Run Facebook ads to an application funnel, uh, get people on the phone, have a conversation and, uh, and close them over the phone. The quickest way to test your messaging and to test your uh, your product offering, your service offering, and your audience as well. And it just so happens that we have a Facebook ads course coming out uh, by the time you're watching this. I think it's out tomorrow or the day after uh, with Kim Barrett from Your Social Voice. So get on to wpelevation.com, go to the courses page, and check out the Facebook ads accelerator uh, course, which is coming out in pre-sale. So you'll be able to get it at a ridiculous price, and it will only be on sale during pre-sale for about seven days. Uh, and then the price will go up when, once we launch it again next year. So grab it while you can. Lovely. I feel like I should promote something, but you know, just a uh, righty got? board, have some premium whiteboards. They're fantastic. Yeah. We yeah. should be an affiliate. Um, <laughs> Rightyboard.com. Check it out. They actually come and they install the whiteboards in your office and yeah. they're uh, very efficient. They're very, pro I find them very cost effective. I think they're <laughs> Absolutely. stupid cheap actually. Yeah. We've got one here. We've got one up in the office. We love it. All right. Hey, thanks for being a guest on the podcast. And look at that. We are over 14,000 likes now on Facebook. There's our Facebook counter in the background. You can hear it. You might be able to hear it going up. We've got over 14,000 people like us on the Facebook page now, which is great. Um, <laughs> thanks for being on the podcast. Dude. This is fun. I was just about to say thanks, but that squirrel ran across the screen <laughs> yeah. and you got distracted real quick. <laughs> Pleasure to be here, man. Thanks so much for having it's me. Good to have you back in the studio. We should do this again. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right. Take care, everyone. Look forward to speaking with you again next week on the podcast. Until then, he's Simon Kelly. He's I'm Troy, Troy Dean. Go, Go Elevate. Elevate.